Western Ag Network's on the road this week in Fort Worth, Texas for Angus Convention 2024. Our coverage and conversations brought to you by IMI Global and Angus Link. Make sure and follow along all of our Western Ag Network social media channels for all the conversations and happenings here at Angus Convention. Convention is officially underway. Things got kicked off on Saturday morning with the general session. And kicking it off was CEO of the American Angus Association, Mr. Mark McCulley. And Mark joins us here today. And Mark, it's uh, it's quite a time to be in the cattle business. Uh, prices are great. We got some drought. There's a lot of issues, but there's a lot of optimism. Uh, so as we go through this year's convention, what what is the feeling with uh, seed stock and commercial producers alike this year? Yeah, I think you're right. There there does tend to be a lot of optimism. Not not ignoring some of the challenges that are out there, folks across the country. There's uh, lots of challenges still to point to, right? But uh, in general, I think we look at our market and we look at some of the fundamentals in our market. The demand is incredibly strong for our product, our end product. Even at the retail prices that we've put out there, we continue to see great movement of our beef products out there yet. Uh, that's translating. Obviously, we're, we're sitting on some pretty low inventories, so that's sitting uh, translating to some really good cattle prices. Uh, but for our commercial customers, uh, of course, our seed stock breeders, our registered Angus breeders have, have continued to enjoy some, some really strong demand on their good registered Angus seed stock and so uh, again quite a bit of optimism uh, fueled by some margin and some profitability in our business. Now as we look towards the future we, we always want to have profitability at the at the top of the conversation there too but innovation yeah. needs to be a part of that as well. What, what are some of the innovative conversations happening uh, uh, in St. Joe with the board of directors with the members as we look towards the future of the Angus breed and the livestock business here in the U.S.? You know, I think, you know, in, in, in general, innovation, I think we're always looking at what we're doing. You know, I think the danger of being around for 140 some years is it's real easy to go to the answer of, well, that's the way we've always done it. So we want to make sure, first and foremost, we don't fall in that trap. And I'd say the history of our organization is one of reinventing ourselves and, and being innovative when we need to. Looking at programs, are they still relevant to the producers? Uh, do they still have the same value? I think some of the bigger discussions we have a lot tend to be on, on the data side. You know, we're getting into a business uh, now more than ever. It's so data driven, uh, whether that's if you're on the agronomy side or if you're on the livestock side, so much more data and analytics behind our decision making. And so we, we're, we're looking at our traditional data, things we use in our EPDs, uh, how to best predict cavities and, and growth and carcass merit. But then we're also looking at new traits, right? How do we maybe better describe some of the genetic influence of uh, disease resistance or things like uh, bovine congestive heart failure is a research topic we've been looking, trying to better understand uh, what are the genetic influences there. Uh, we're looking at some new innovation around red meat yield, uh, even uh, maybe beyond what the yield grade equation tells us today. Are there some other things from a, a measurement standpoint we can better predict red meat yield and value of of cattle. So uh, data and new technologies to collect data and analyze data seem to be at the forefront a lot of those discussions around innovation. So as, as we look ahead and our producers are here on the ground, what what is some of the things we're hearing from the commercial sector? I know we're focusing a lot on that right now, yeah. but the bread and butter of all these seed stock producers are their commercial customers out in the countryside. What are some things that they are hearing from their customers and, and planning, utilizing that data and making that data maybe a little more easier to understand and then implement right. in marketing and uh, just trying to be more successful as a business? Absolutely. Well, and I think, you know, and gosh, some of our commercial producers, they've, they've studied their lesson. They know those numbers uh, inside out and backwards when it comes to EPDs. Others maybe just aren't, uh, they've maybe relied on their seed stock producer to be kind of the expert in those tools and 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 so I think you know our commercial producers are uh, first and foremost they've got to make sure they've got a cow herd that is is fertile and functional and fits the environment they're in but I always say you know more than ever we're seeing signals sent for the end product weight uh, is you know you look at the harvest weights we need these cattle to get to today uh, you know 14 15 1600 pounds uh, we want high quality products so I, I talk about balance right and how do we help our commercial producers balance the realities of keeping that that cow herd functional uh, along with producing a feeder calf that goes on and really meets the demands of our market which is to grow fast get big and grade well and uh, fortunately we've got a diverse breed we've got a lot of, of tools in the tool Toolbox I talk about all the time. Uh, we've got better genetic tools to help us, if you will, bend some of those curves and find that balance for our commercial cattlemen to help them stay in business and, and, and match the market. 
Well, Mark, is there a message you just want to share with our viewers and listeners back home in Western Ag Network country here today, just about the state of the association and uh, any just last thoughts, I guess? Yeah, and I, I just, uh, you know, op optimism, uh, I think, is, is I, I hope, um, if I can be a word of encouragement to our producers, so appreciate. And I know sometimes it can sound like, well, yeah, you're not out here doing it. And, and, uh, and, and so we so appreciate our producers, uh, the hard work, the perseverance that, that they put forward. Uh, but I also know that we're, we're excited about the demand that's being created for uh, for our cattlemen, the, the product uh, that's uh, being so well received around the world, and the profitability and margin opportunities that that's creating for them. So I hope that drives some optimism and some opportunity. Well, optimism and opportunity are great to have in, in the livestock business. So Mark McCulley, thank you for joining us here today at the American Angus Association's 141st annual convention going on here in Fort Worth, Texas. We're going to have more of these conversations on all of our Western Ag Network platforms throughout our coverage so make sure and uh, tune in and make sure we want to thank our friends at IMI Global and Angus Link for bringing you these conversations here on the road this week in Fort Worth. <music>